in which box are the most triangles these are the different boxes and we want to count the triangles here we have one triangle here one two three four here one two in this box one two three here one and we want to count the most triangles meaning maximum number of triangles four is the maximum out of all these numbers so b is the correct choice a sandwich and a juice cost 12 euros together a sandwich and two juices cost 14 euros together we can also see that in the picture here one sandwich and one juice is 12 euros one sandwich and two juices are 14 euros how many euros does one juice so we need to find the cost of one juice um here i can see that i can group it like this and i know that one sandwich and one juice is 12 euros so i can write this as 12 plus something is 14 so 12 plus what number is equal to 14 12 plus 2 is 14 so here the juice must cost 2 euros so 2 is the correct choice now if you are in grade 5 or above you can also try the algebra way I can write this as one sandwich plus juice is 12 euros one sandwich plus two juice is 14 euros and I need to find the cost of one juice so I can write this as s is equal to I will take the j to the other side 12 minus j here I can substitute the value of s here s is 12 minus j and then I have plus 2j equal to 14 all right so 2j minus j is just j and I'll take 12 to the other side so there is 14 minus 12 14 minus 12 is equal to 2 this matches with our previous answer Anna cuts the picture of a mushroom in two halves. This is the picture of a mushroom. This is cut in two halves. She then arranges the two pieces together to form a new picture. What could this new picture look like? So this is cut in two halves and then the parts are rearranged and we want to figure out which of this is going to match a rearranged picture. Um, let's call this part A. Let's call this part B. Let's first check option A. A matches here, but we can see that if I, there's no way I can make B look like this by turning it or moving it, right? So this cannot be the choice. On part B, A matches here. And then if I flip it, we can see that this pointed thing is going to point inside but here it is not so this is also not a correct choice let's part let's look at part c now choice c here i can say th this looks like part a here and th the part the part b if i turn it this is going to point to the left and this doesn't so this also doesn't look like a correct choice all right now let's take a look at choice d if i okay both are upside down so if i turn part a like this i i could make it look like this a here but part b if i rotate it this is going to point outside so this i cannot make it look like part b so that is out that is out now here this is part a b 
if I turn it like this, I can see that this is pointing inside and this is looking good. This is part B. So E is the correct choice. In the four squares of a row, there always have to be exactly two coins. So in each row, there has to be exactly two coins. In the four squares below each other, there always have to be exactly two coins. So on each column, also there has to be exactly two coins. On which square does one more coin have to be placed? All right, so let's check each row and each column. On this row, I can see one, two, two coins already. Here also I can see two coins. Here there is only one coin, so let me mark this row. Here one, two, two coins. Now let's check each column. One, two, so this column is done. This second column is one, two. This column is also done. Here I can see only one coin, so let me mark this. Here one and two, so this column is also done. So I need one more coin on this row and on this column. So if I put the coin in, in the intersection, they will satisfy both the condition, right? So if I, so correct choice is D, right? If I put one more coin here, there will be two on this column, there will be two on this row as well. A monkey has torn off a piece of Captain Jack's map. This is a map and a part is missing here. What does the piece the monkey has torn off look like? All right, so let's check each part at a time. If we focus on this one, I can see that this looks like from this place. So this cannot be the correct choice. Let me check, take a look at this one. This looks like, okay, there is the red line that is continuing. There is a little bit of orange there that is matching. And the shape here looks like a continuation of this shape. So this looks like a good choice. Let me take a look at this. This one, I can see this, see this picture here, here. So this doesn't look like a correct choice. For D, I can see that that is coming from this part. So this is not a correct choice. For E, let me see if I can, E looks like there's a little bit orange, but here, as you can see, this comes from this part here. So this is also not a correct choice. So B is the correct answer for this. These five animals are made from different shapes. There is one shape which is only used on one animal. On which animal is this shape used? So we need to find the shape that is used only on one animal. Let's check the different shapes then. So this is a parallelogram. I can see that this is used in many different animals. So this is not it. How about the square? Square I can see used here, here. So the square cannot be it. These are basically the same triangles, different sizes, but they are the same shape. So the triangles cannot be. Here, only the triangles and square and parallelogram. So these cannot be. There's a parallelogram, triangle, square. So this animal cannot be it. How about here? So there's a triangle is already used, but the rectangle is not on any other animal. So this is a possibility. Here there are squares, triangles, and parallelogram. So this cannot be it. So it looks like the square, the rectangle is the shape that is not used in any other animal. So D is the correct choice. There is an animal asleep in each of the five baskets. The koala and the fox sleep in baskets with the same pattern and the same shape. The kangaroo and the rabbit sleep in baskets with the same pattern. In which basket does the mouse sleep? All right. The koala and the fox, koala and the fox sleep in the basket with the same pattern and the same shape same pattern and the same shape. So this basket two and basket four 
are the same pattern the polka dots and the same shape so this cannot be it all right the kangaroo and the rabbit sleep in baskets with the same pattern so i can see the same pattern here basket one and basket three so this cannot be it right now so the only one that is remaining is basket five so basket five is the correct choice here The picture shows one object made up of five identical building blocks. How many building blocks touch exactly three others? All right, so we can check each block. This block is touching one, two, and three. All right, so this block is touching one, two. It's also touching this and this, four, so this is not it. This block is touching this, that is one. It's also touching this and this, so this is it. This block is touching these three plus one four, so this is not it. This block is touching this block, that is one, and it's also touching these three. So is, this block is touching four, so this also cannot be it. So there are only two blocks that touch exactly three others. So B is the correct choice. The kangaroo wants to visit the koala. There is a kangaroo, it wants to visit the koala. On its way, it is not allowed to jump through a square with water. So these are the patches of water. It is not allowed to jump through the water. Each arrow shows one jump to a neighboring field. Which path is the kangaroo allowed to take? All right, so basically we can check each of these choices. Okay, I can see that all the five choices have two rights. So that is great, two right, and then also all the five choices have two up so i'm at this point here and i'm done checking until this here i'm going two up on the choice a if i go one two i'm already on the water so this is not possible choice b one two three four to the right one two three four i'm on the water then this is not possible choice c Two to the right, two to the up, two to the right, two to the up, and then three to the right. One, two, three, and I'm at the koala, so it looks like this is possible. But let's double check D and E. Two to the right, so let me change the pen, pen color. Two to the right, two to the up, so two to the right, two to the up, and then I'm coming back. So obviously this is not going to work. Then I'm going one more up. So let me change the pen color again. I'm going one up. But if I go one more up, I'm already on the water. So this is not going to work. Then C is the correct choice. Carl write down a five digit number. He then places a shape on each of the five digits. See picture, okay? He places different shapes on different digits, different shapes on different digits. He places the same shape on the same digits. Which number did Carl hide? So this is digit one, two, three, four, five. Two and three, they are the same shape, so they have to be the same digit. Let's check choice A, four and four, that is fine. Four and five, that is not okay. So that cannot be an answer. Four and four is fine. Four and four is fine. Two and four are not the same. So this cannot be a choice. Now let's check each of the choices. Three, two and six. Three, two and six they are the different digits and different shapes so this looks like is a possible uh, answer three two and three so three and three are the same but they are not the same shape so this cannot be a choice four four and four we can see that there is another four there but there's a different shape so this also cannot be the right choice so 
A is the correct choice. Catherine forms a patch around each square. For that, she uses stones like this. So this is a stone which is length of two and height of one. How many such stones does she need for a patch around the square with side length five? All right, so for this square, how many bricks are needed? Okay, so let's try to draw according to these pictures. So I know that this is one. So this is five. So let's start, let me start from here. This is five and this is one. So that is total six and the length is two. So I can fit three bricks here. One, two and three. So this is one brick. This is two brick and this is three bricks. So they are two plus two plus two is six. We have five here and the width here is one. So they together are six. Okay. Similarly, I can fit three bricks here, one, two, and three. And I, I can do the same here, one, two, and three. I can do the same here, one, two, and three. Now, if, if I count it up, let's see that this pattern is repeating, right? Let me change the pen color. this pattern here one two and three they are repeating so there are three here three here three here three here so three and there are four sides 12 so we need 12 bricks c is the correct choice below you see five pieces of lawn which one has the smallest area of grass so let me just count up the areas. I can see that I can divide the areas in triangles and count them up. So here one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So this has seven triangles. Here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. This has eight triangles. I have one, two, three, four five six seven eight i have eight triangle here here i have one two three four five six seven and eight i have eight here i have one two three four five six seven and eight so which has the smallest area of grass seven is the smallest a is the correct choice The numbers in the five circles around each house add up to 20. Some numbers are missing. Which number does this question mark stand for? Okay, so they add up to 20 here and I need to find this number. Okay, let me start adding this. So 5 plus 2 plus 6, 5 plus 2 plus 6 plus something has to be 20. So 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 6 is 13. So this has to be 7. 13 plus 7 is 20. So this has to be 7. All right. Now 7. I start with 7. So these two are taken. Plus 3. Plus. I don't know what is this. So this is a question mark. Plus 1 has to be 20. This also have to add up to 20, right? So 7 plus 3 is 10 plus 1 is 11. 11 plus what number is 20? 11 plus 9 is 20. So D is the correct answer. So there is a second approach to this problem. As you can see, these two numbers are the same for both. They add up for this. They also add up for this. So 5 plus 2 plus 6 so 5 plus 2 plus 6, they should be same as 3 plus, we don't know what is this number, plus 1. So 3 plus question mark plus 1, right? So 3 plus 1 is 4. This is 4 plus the question mark. Here 5 plus 2 is 7 plus 6 is 13, right? So 
if I subtract 4 from 13, this is going to be 9. 9 plus 4 is 13. So again, 9 is the correct answer. So there are two different ways you can do it. Dino walks from entrance to the exit. This is the entrance. This is the exit. He is only allowed to go through each room once. We cannot visit the same room twice. The room have numbers. So we can see that in the diagram. Dino adds up all the numbers of the rooms he walks through. So basically, whichever room we walk through, we add up all those numbers. Now, what is the biggest result? We want the biggest result. He can get this way. All right. So now let's start drawing it on the picture. We start, we, we have to enter here. And since I want, I have two choices here, five or two. I want a bigger number. So I go to five and I have no choice here, but to go to six. Here again, I have two choice, two or seven. So I go to seven because I want the biggest result. Again, two choices, three or eight. I choose eight because I want the biggest result and then out, right? Okay. In, in the beginning, we may think since I want the biggest result, I just walk through the bigger numbers. So in this way, I get one plus five plus six plus seven plus eight. And these add up to one plus five is six plus six is 12 plus seven is 19 plus eight is 27, right? But if we think a little bit more carefully, right? Can I also try to grab some of the numbers that I'm missing here? So let me change the pen color. So I still enter it from one, go to five because I want the bigger number. When I arrive at six, I'm missing two, three, and four, right? So can I try to go up like this so that I get the bigger numbers, but also try to grab two of the smaller numbers. But when I come here, I cannot go to four because then I have to come back and I cannot visit the same room twice. So I have to go out. So in this case, I grab two additional numbers, that is two and three. So I have the earlier numbers and two additional numbers. So two plus three is five. So I had 27 earlier, I'm getting five more. So this comes to 32. All right. Okay. Now we need to think a little bit more on this, right? See here, I'm missing a bigger number four. I'm grabbing all the numbers, but I'm missing the number four. But can I go such that, you know, I try to grab this bigger number here and maybe try to miss one of the smaller numbers to maximize the sum, right? So let me change the color again. Now, if I want to grab number four, the easier would be to start from the back. So let me come this way, right? And I want to grab four. I don't want to miss the bigger number. So I want to grab four. From four, I don't have a choice. I have to go three. Now again, I can go to seven or two. Here, let me go to seven because I want the bigger result. Now from seven, I have no choice. I come to six. Now six, I have a choice. I can go to two, one, but then I have to be out. I'm missing a big number five. Other choices, I can go to five, one, and now then I have to be a smaller number two. So let me go to five, one, and out, right? So basically I can go like this, one, five, I'm sacrificing two here. So I'm taking six to seven, three, four, eight. And I'm doing this so that I can grab a bigger number and miss a smaller number here. So if I do it this way, I'm missing only the number two here, right? So if I add the rest of the numbers, that is one plus five plus six plus seven plus three plus four plus eight. So they add up to one plus five is six plus six is 12 plus seven is um, 19 plus 3 is 22, 22 plus 
4 is 26, 26 plus 8 is 34, right? So, looks like, you know, I cannot go through all the rooms, right? Because I cannot repeat. But then I try to miss a, a room with a, as small a number as possible. And by doing this, seems like, you know, 34 is the biggest number I can get without repeating a room. So D is the correct choice. The three zebras, Runa, Zara and Biba, Runa, Zara and Biba take part in a competition. The winner is the zebra with the most stripes. Runa has 15 stripes. Zara has three stripes more than Runa. Runa has five stripes less than Biba. How many stripes does the winner have? Okay, the winner is the zebra with the most stripes. So we need to find out which of Runa, Zara or Biba have the most stripes, right? So let me, so we are given some conditions. Runa has 15, so R is equal to 15, okay? So that is this. Jara has three stripes more than Runa. So G, three stripes more than Runa. So Runa, whatever Runa has, plus three. R is 15 plus three is 18, right? Okay, I'm done with this. Runa has five stripes less than Biba. Okay, Runa has five stripes less than Biba. Whatever the Biba has, five less, right? So Runa has five less than Biba. All right, so I know the Runa has 15, right? So this is 15. Whatever Biba has, minus five, right? So if I add five on both sides, so this becomes 20, minus 5 and plus 5 becomes 0. So this says, tells me that Biva has 20, right? So how many steps does the winner? And we know that the winner has the most stripes. So here, Runa has 5, Zara has 18, Biva has 20. 20 is the biggest number. So C is the correct choice.